so the obvious, and, I, and I, I'm curious how often you hear this answer, but the obvious answer for me uh, is my is my dad and really my mom. Uh, they were entrepreneurs. Uh, my mom uh, still to this day is an author and a speaker, and she travels around the country um, servicing her um, her niche, uh, her her audience, which uh, is Christian women. Uh, and so, you know, they essentially, you know, they have a nonprofit ministry, um, but there's a lot of entrepreneurship that goes on with uh, marketing your service, delivering your service um, and executing. And uh, when I say service, what do I mean? I, I mean, you know, showing up to speaking events and and giving presentations and selling books. You know, that's that that's <laughs> essentially, a, a, you know, somewhat of a, a business that's entrepreneurial. Yeah. And so I, I grew up uh, under under that, uh, I don't know, tutelage, that's, that's an odd word, but I grew up, you know, yeah, being, being uh, a part of that, you know, my brother's 10 years younger. So I had a lot of years, just me and them. And, uh, you know, we'd sit at the table and talk business quote unquote, uh, and how to execute. Well, we'd talk operations, we'd talk marketing because, you know, my, my mother's ministry, it's not just her, you know, she's she's at the, uh, the the stature where she has, you know, 10 resources who work for her and who help to propel the organization's mission forward in different domains. And so, you know, there's there's a lot to this, this, the, this, this uh, entrepreneurship that they were engaged in. And so as a young person, being able to sit there and really to be welcomed in to these conversations at the dinner table really helped to develop a mind, in my opinion, that was entrepreneurial, um, ha- had the ability to be disciplined and detailed, but also at the same time to be, uh, you know, intuitive and um, to, to write copy, to, to to make marketing materials. You know, it's it's the left and the right brain. Um, and so, you know, I, I really, I guess, I should probably tell them this more often, but they, they really did have an impact on my life in that regard, so much so that my mother has recently made it a rule. Well, this is about 10 years ago. She made a rule that no more, no more business, no more ministry, uh, you know, spoken at the, uh, at the dinner table. So we, we like can't do that anymore because we just always talk shop. And if it's not, you know, uh, you know, you know, the, the ministry, um, then it's, there's other domains, uh, of entrepreneurship, uh, other businesses, you know, my dad's involved in other enterprises. Uh, so we're just talking about everything, analyzing, you know, I was reading like, I was reading like the New Yorker and, and Wall Street Journal at like, you know, 15, I, you know, I was just real heady. So they, they really, they really allowed me to, to blossom in that area. And I don't by any means have it all figured out, but they definitely impacted me to where I am now. I love it. Yeah. And it's interesting. Uh, Kendra and I both know your parents like uh, Phil and Jennifer are amazing people. And someone asked me the other day how uh, I actually met you, Clayton. And I was I was thinking back and Kendra and I were thinking back. We actually knew your parents first. And then randomly, we were at a coffee shop, didn't know you yet. And sitting right by you, I turn around, I ask you to, to fix a Wi-Fi issue because I thought you were maybe a really nice tech guy that like knew what he was doing, but he wasn't going to be really mean to me. And anyway, uh, come to find out we had like so many paths that crossed and you just moved here from Houston. So all that to say, uh, got to know your parents a little bit before you and I can definitely see um, you know, how they've mentored you over the years and and how they poured into what you're doing now and how you've run with it. Because obviously I think you're doing a great job now. So it's pretty cool to Absolutely. see. Absolutely. Yeah. Well said. Thank you. And and that is where we met. And that was during the peak of COVID at that yeah, coffee shop. It was. And so, uh, you know, we were all wearing masks at that point, I think. I mean, this was peak COVID. So you're lucky I showered that day. Maybe I'm lucky I showered that day so I could <laughs> I could meet you. Oh, that's good. Maybe I maybe I was drawn to you because I just smelled you, or maybe I was scared. <laughs> yeah, I, I was scared. I have that effect on people. people. Yeah, I've heard that before. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Yeah. Well, um, curious as far as uh, as any other mentors that you've had that you have now. Yeah, Honestly, absolutely. Let's hear some more. So two two others, and informal mentorships. I think I think informal might be a theme. Of like effective that. mentors, Not always. You know, there are people that I seek them out. You know, for their wisdom and feedback. It, it, that's obvious, but but there's also plenty of informal mentoring going on. And I think when you have a humble um, 
disposition, which, you know, I try to cultivate. I, I don't, you know, I, I do try to cultivate that. Um, when you have a humble disposition, you can really learn from anyone, right? It, because everyone has these different domains of expertise. Um, and so when I, when I look at mentors, uh, you know, I think of uh, two people, actually. Um, and I'll, I'll be brief with one of them. I'll expand on the other. So, so the first one is uh, this guy named named Levent, uh, and he I worked for him. And the reason I chuckle is because he uh, he basically managed he oversaw the project I was on back in 2015 2016 working for Retail Energy. Our job was to deliver electricity to customers. How do we do that? Well, we have to forecast what we expect the demand to be for this electricity. So on July 7th of this year, based on historical data, based on many other variables available to us, how many megawatt hours of supply do we have to put on the grid? Okay, we solved July 7th. What about September 7th? What about September 8th, September 9th? What about September 9th at 10 a.m., at 10, 15 a.m.? So we basically build these forecast models and, and he oversaw this group. And this was in a transitionary time of, of my life. I was essentially trying to become a professional that created actual value and not just a, a you know, a post-college grad where sometimes you're trying to figure stuff out and just, you know, your goal is to kind of sit quiet at meetings and just absorb and take notes. Uh, and so I was really trying to grow and it was a tough pro project. And I just remember this person, I, I learned a lot about professional behavior from him because he was always polite, but he was very serious, very detailed, and he had a high degree of accountability and responsibility that he that he absorbed himself, but then also placed on us. And, you know, he's just a person that, and I've, of course, never told him this either, but uh, he's a person I really learned a lot from as far as how to operate teams and, and to lead teams that you know, I think a lot, a lot of people struggle with leadership. A lot of people struggle with leadership. Yeah. And for me, leadership is a, is a balance. And I could talk a lot about that, but, but some of the traits and themes of, of effective leadership is, you know, a, a serious intentionality about the mission being mission first, but balancing it with this discipline of remaining polite, remaining understanding when people have things going on, remaining supportive of your team, but still going back to the mission. And I think I think people, when they seek to be effective leaders, they're on one side or the other of that of that scale. And an effective leader is always calibrating. And I just think Levent did a good job for me and where I was at in my career of, of really modeling. And that's what that's what mentors do. Mentors don't just say, you know, they also model. So he did he did well with that.